one amazing series of YA novels, an insatiable thirst to relive the glory that is K.A. Applegate's literary masterpiece. This is Phantomorphs, The Dork Bajir Chronicles. Number 7, The Streaming. Hello, and welcome to the Dork Bajir Chronicles, a Phantomorph podcast where we read through the Animorph series one book at a time and talk about it every week. Today we'll be talking about Animorphs number seven, The Stranger. My name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden, the god, because it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't fucking matter anymore. No, it god doesn't matter anymore because God. God is dead and hell is real. All, yeah, hell is real. God, it can just do whatever the fuck he wants. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the basis of my whole religious standpoint. I'm fucking drunk for this podcast. <laughs> Let's jump right in. Uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully not too drunk for the recap. Book number seven, The Stranger. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, it's a okay. strange one, folks. Uh, we open up with Rachel and Cassie uh, bothering a young professional at the zoo. Uh, gosh. But, uh, no, yeah, there's this elephant tamer, uh, who uses a cattle prod, and they're like, I'm having none of that. So Rachel turns into an elephant, picks him up with her trunk, and then says, I'm from the elephant police. Don't hurt these elephants ever again, (laughs) or I'll trunk you up, man. She does say that, and it's like, I mean, it reads like a line from Scott Pilgrim with the vegan police. Yeah, yeah. Like, Actually, yeah. But that was hilarious. Way to preemptively rip off Scott Pilgrim, Rachel. Mm-hmm. No last name. <laughs> uh, anyway, after that, Rachel goes home, and she has dinner with her folks, including her dad, which is new, because her parents are, are divorced. divorced. Oh! Broken home! Oh! What would trust issues? Sidebar, I am just realizing now maybe that's why she and Tobias get along so well is because he also has a broken home. Broken Yep, divorce is super funny. Yep. <laughs> As a child of divorce, uh, yeah, I can yeah. say anyway, that legally. Anyway, 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 <laughs> shut anyway, up. anyway. Um, and he says to them, "I am moving to another city, um, like another state, so you can't like see me a lot anymore." Where Ra- previously, yeah. never before been mentioned, but previously Rachel hung out with her dad like every weekend, I guess. Yes. And then he's like, yo, Rachel, you're the oldest. Want to come with so I'm not lonely as shit? And we act like this is an actual choice that Rachel can make. But it's like, no, obviously not. You're not going to be able to fight the Yerks from fucking San Francisco. (laughs) No, no, I mean, she's thinking of abandoning the Yerk thing. That's her whole deal, this book. I mean, yeah. And then... It's like, yeah, Rachel... But, like, she never entertains the idea. ...is gonna, like, abandon and go back to her normal life of being a gymnast and being hit on by creepy dudes who like elephant girls. Yeah. Also, also, like, they never even entertain the idea of, like, oh, you could still fight the... Like, this is supposed to be an international conspiracy of Yerks, right? It's not just yeah. happening in butt fuck. <laughs> I mean, the kids. Green A old town. I feel like the kids think it is going on internationally. <laughs> well, like they we fucking space aliens. We don't know for sure, though. What if know. they are? They don't even entertain the, nowhere. Like Tobias could go with her. Axe doesn't have any ties to this town. He could go with her. Yeah, that's Split true. the team. Fucking <gasps> work from both ends. They never split the party. Anyway. Also, without Jake. What are they really? This is true, which we will find Just out in a later book. Just slapping between their knees, waiting to come, bringing it back. <laughs> bringing it back. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so she's, she's like, very yeah, conflicted, I'm conflicted about something that doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter, because then they find out there's a new yerk pool, and they decide, like, you know what? We're going for it. We're going to well, destroy them candrinos. It's not a new yerk pool, it's a new yerk pool entrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well... 
good as. Because the last one that they went to was the one in, in the, school, the school, right? And now they found one. Work anymore. Uh, Marco, we find out, Marco and Tobias have been uh, keeping an eye on known controllers. And uh, Tobias has had his eye in the sky and Marco has had his eyes on the ground. Because uh, Marco is in the fucking game now, you know? He didn't even tell Jake about this because his mom is uh, fucking in it. A Visor controller, one. the controller, mm-hmm. in fact, uh, is Visor One. In if you didn't remember, and so like everyone else is like, I wonder why Marco is so into this now. Uh, we fucking know why. Why are yeah. you an idiot, Rachel? Didn't you read books one through six? <laughs> A bit of dramatic <laughs> irony. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They find out that the new entrance is in a gap changing room. Ugh, throwbacks uh, to so the they gap. All become roaches. And go into the yerk pool, and they're like, okay, this is gonna go great. We're gonna do this, guys. Oh, fuck, we're being <laughs> eaten by a tax on. Oh, fuck, no way out of this. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, time paused, and we're being wait, unmorphed, wait, wait. and Tobias is back as a human? Just to be clear, they weren't being eaten by a tax in maliciously it just thought like ooh a no, snack no the taxon yeah. cause I mean the taxon it didn't realize eats everything so it taxons are fucked guys it's so <laughs> fucked it's <laughs> fucked that they're all controlled by the Yerks it's fucked that this obviously like super simplistic creature like everyone judges them like they have given themselves up when they're just like <laughs> fucking nothing <laughs> they're they're mindless weird little nothings and everyone's like you made the you they obviously have no it's so fucked it's like stealing candy from a, the moral equivalent of stealing candy from a baby and we're all yep. judging this baby for not defending itself yeah i mean Kate, why didn't you exercise your right to bear arms baby come on baby you should have bear like, arms yeah <laughs> It's you should have whipped out a pistol, a bitch. <laughs> and cap that burns, motherfucker. Anyway, so time freezes. Time freezes. And they it's all time unworth, to meet a brand new friend. Including motherfucking Tobias, who wasn't even here before. And he's like, but he, it, there's this really funny bit where Rachel is like, Tobias, you're human, and goes to hug him. And he's startled. So he like flaps his arms like a oh, yeah. bird to try to get away from her. And then he's, he's really like, embarrassed Sorry. about it, you guys. It's like he just shit his pants and in then, front of the team. And then a fucking god speaks to them in their heads. He's like, hello, I am god and I am here to he's give you a choice. He's not named god. Brady. Yeah, he's What's called he an named? Elemist. Oh, and Axe is like, oh! It's an Elemist! The Elemist! Jesus Christ! Oh my fucking god, I'm shitting! Oh my Jesus! <laughs> Holy fuck, I'm shitting my Andalite I'm shitting my shorts. Andalite shorts. Sidebar, how do Andalites shit? Do they just shit like horses? Is it all watery? <laughs> they actually have a cloaca. They also breathe cloaca. God damn it. Their face, their face cloacas. Their face cloacas. They he shit, just, he shits through his nose. Piss and breathe through that. That's horrifying. <laughs> just through the little nostril slits. Can you imagine uh, this? Yeah. Three just... So like, his there's nose. these beings called Elemists now, who we are apparently. We don't know everywhere. how many there are because the one well, Elemist we know there we are see, multiple ones. Does he say there's multiple? I guess so. Yeah, I guess he so. does. They say Elemists, not there. It's an, ele- an Elemist. But then they continue to refer to him as the Elemist. I mean, he doesn't really give them a name. Like the fuck, he's not the fucking. He's Watcher Adam Elemist. <laughs> also, like, just to, it's like it's not that weird because, like, let's say there was one lion in a high school, you wouldn't refer to it as, as like, "Hey, remember, you know how there's a lion?" No, I would, you'd I be would, like, "Hey, you remember the fucking lion in Mikhail, the school?" I would yeah. call him Ryan, which is his name, because he's the li- Ryan anyway, the lion. So, and you would be killed. Yeah, a god <laughs> appears out of fucking nowhere, and Axe is like, "Oh shit." One of those god guys that I didn't mention. Wow. I wonder what he's doing here. But I all I know about Elemis is that their thing is they save endangered species and, like, collect them. I wonder why he... Uh, this I is totally unpredictable here. that he huh. would have showed up in why this is situation. Why he here at the human race? There is so much that Axe, like, forgets to tell them. <laughs> that just like pops up like but oh yeah it, you like, act like we can shoot fucking laser beams out of our buttholes <laughs> did i forget like, to mention whenever i shit <laughs> i kill a yerk like whenever i shit a yerk dies <sighs> anyway yeah it offers them a ch- it shows them a bunch of visions of the various 
beautiful things on Earth. Uh, fucking lions stalking the savannah, squiddies and fishies swimming in the great blue ocean. Art. And then he shows, like, <laughs> and then humans going through their daily lives, and he's like, gosh, they sure are beautiful. I'd love to save some humans. Would you like, in your family, like to be the humans I saved and just give up <laughs> Earth to the Yerks? And they're all like, uh, oh gosh, um, no. But he's like, okay, well, um, I'll be back later. <laughs> and like, just keeps time paused a little while longer and is like, just so, you know, I w-. And while there's, while he's obviously stalling, they notice, oh look, there's a, Way There's out. There's a drop shaft, like, right there. And they're like, oh gosh, it's cool we noticed that while he was distracted. Or distracting us. Uh-huh. Yeah, they get out. Um, so he Rachel unfreezes goes time and they're back. Berserk. There's, they're back as roaches on the, on the tongue. So this is, a, I have an issue with this. So they're in the Yerk pool and they're presumably in, like, the Yerk pool where it's public and a taxon just, like, slurps them up. So then when the Elemist unfreezes time, they're back as roaches. Being so eaten being by the eaten. taxon. So to get free, they demorph. So now they're humans in front of all of Yerk Well, they're kind. part way to human. Uh, like it takes them in the books, it takes them a couple minutes, which like, or they, more, which to morph. they keep fluctuating because yeah. then later on it'll be like like only seconds for morphing. So they look like they look like roachy things, and then they're the running humans. through the crowd as roachy also they're things. covered in taxon, and then they like become fully human so that Rachel can just bear out um, bear zerk. She can, go, <laughs> she can just like which is actually. Go, the uh, language originator of the term berserk, berserk, meaning like the bear. Wait, she that's just, made like, up. She just goes I mean, like bear it's pretty chested similar. at it. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I, I had an issue when I was rereading these books and I got to that point and mm-hmm. I was like, what? You kids. And then they kind of faff around a bit <sighs> and are like, oh gosh, I wonder if we'll take that Elemis deal when he comes back. Yeah. And then the Elemis comes back and is like, hello, would you like to take my deal again? Uh, oh, oh, wait, wait, sorry, I'm getting a memo. Can I send, I'm sending you to the future. And it, at this point, it becomes obvious this, this Elemis has no fucking plan, or at least not the one he's telling us. And they go to the future and they look around, they faff about the future <laughs> a bit. And there's fucking skeletons in schools that Everything no one has is cleaned like up. Mars even and though it's, gray yeah, and red. even though it's still like a planet that like, the year controllers are living on. Nobody's cleaned up all these skeletons. <sighs> no, you gotta leave decor around. The the just things are fucked up. Isn't the mall like a fucking? It's a it's a year. Uh, oh, the mall is turned into a taxon hive. Like a taxon hive. Yeah, it's yeah. like taxons yeah. jooping around. And then they take a train um, to the center of town where the year pool was and still is. Uh, just sort of set up, and they notice that there's one tower that a lot of stuff is knocked down, but there's a tower, the, like, Amp Tower? Imp Something tower? like that. Tamp it's a made-up tower? business tower. It's like yeah. the it's a It's a business tower. It's still yeah. around. And they're like, gosh, I wonder why that is. I wonder if that'll be important later. And then fucking Visor 3 appears and is like, hello, it's just as you said, Rachel, <gasps> and then like twenty <laughs> year old Rachel comes out and like looking super buff. I am you, Rachel, but yerked bitch. Look at the five of you standing here quaking in your boots. And then they're like, "Wait, five? There's six of us. You guys fucked up." And then they realize, "Oh, axe. They're not counting axe. Gosh, they really hammer in." They are not counting Axe because they did not expect Axe. Axe changes everything. Axe is a tipping point. The fucking chosen one. Jesus H. Blue Christ himself. And and the next paragraph is like, oh gosh, something's changed. I don't remember exactly what, though. Um, and then they go home after beating up Visor 3 a little. And uh, The Elemist is like, the- you want to take our deal? And they say yes. And then the Elemis just fucks off. Just he's fucks just off. gone. Bye. Yeah. And they're like, oh, maybe he's building the zoo for us. Nope. Yeah. Uh, he never comes back. And then <laughs> they're like, oh, the wait a minute, answer? wait a minute. 
Why was that tower still there? Oh, fucking uh, effing frickin' the Candrona must be in there. So that's they go they, and they, they beat like, up the Candrona. Yeah. There's a bit where Rachel is like, a butterfly flaps its wings, and it does the whole, like, fucking butterfly effect Oh, metaphor. and she dreams about being the butterfly. Yeah. yeah. That flaps its little wings. But yeah, so then they fucking destroy the Candrona. Oh, Rachel acquires a bear at some uh, during this book was what she, like, I want to get yeah. some more firepower that's not, like, huge, like an elephant. Also, everyone's really worried about Rachel, like, zerking out like all this book but it never matters it's just like oh boy i sure am a loose cannon oh yeah. rachel you sure are a loose cannon shut up my dad's moving <laughs> and then at the end she just like sorry dad dad i love stay. you but i mean you should really care about your other kids and not just the firstborn did she ever tell them that her dad was moving yes yeah. oh, okay okay I think she, like, tried to mention it casually, Rachel style, and then mm-hmm. everybody in their 13-year-old way were just like, oh my god, it's a huge deal, and yeah. this should be the subplot of the book. Yeah. And then it just didn't I mean, matter. Let's get real, though. Like, that was pretty brilliant as a metaphor, because oh, yeah. the metaphor of the, or, like, the, the situation of the Elemist offering them a chance to leave is literally the exact same as <gasps> Rachel's but dad same- offering them. <laughs> It moots it entirely. Yeah, because like, we know that she's yeah. not going to choose. We know there's 50 more fucking books. What, Rachel's just going to do <laughs> recon for them now from across the yeah. universe? Well, we all know that the stakes weren't there, right? The meta is impossible to ignore. Anyway, let's get into the nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. I'm just seeing here in the notes on page 28, she wants a powerful morph and then skips the polar bears and someone has called her a fucking idiot because polar yeah, bears are the largest land predators in the world. Mikhail, you're the fucking idiot. Polar bears are built for cold climates. If she were to morph a polar bear in their normal American habitat, she would get overheated quickly and it would not be effective. Is this a setup for a future book? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet Rachel, the person who morphed the African elephant... Was yeah. definitely thinking about where the fucking animal is from when she morphed it. I mean, like, we don't know where they are. What if they're in fucking Florida? Well, would... I mean... What? What? Why what? would that make well, it better for an elephant? Florida's warm. An elephant would be fine. <laughs> so it's basically entirely like, if it's from a warm place, it's fine. If it's from a it's cold place, fine. it's not fine. It's There's so many other fine. factors. Well, a polar bear, like doesn't instantly overheat like they obviously yeah. have them in the zoo wherever they are and they're covered just like a polar bear for fucking they're just like covered in ice in the, 20 in the minutes zoo. at a time they're just not covered at in all ice no in the zoo. They are no no that's wrong the whatever the zoo in my <laughs> mind has ice for the polar bears polar bears live in just like basically the same habitats yeah. they've got the water bears. okay water is liquid ice Look at that white concrete. That yeah. looks like ice. Let's, let's talk about the real issues here. Let's talk about the real problem, which was the Elemist, like, going off on a tangent about, like, how Elemists are all about preserving um, species and Things. stuff. Yeah. But how that logic is, like, inherently flawed because he's like, we need to save you from the Yurks. But the Yurks are also living creatures. And the humans aren't going to die if the Yurks infect them but they also talk about specifically cherishing sentient life and sentience and well yurks are sentient yeah Yeah. but yurks also pretty much steal sentience yeah no they steal the sentience it's like i feel like the elemist is supporting the humans because he wants to fight for Mm -hmm. the underdog and then maybe the yurks have their own oh guess what it's the elemist twin evil elemist i'm getting sort of um (laughs) an almost Oh god, I don't I don't know how to bring this up without having to go into an entire thing. But later in like the Cthulhu mythos when Lovecraft had died, um some authors started making it like um the the like Cthulhu's and Yellow Kings and all the different and Yogg-Sothoths and Nyarlathotep's into elemental spirits. Including, like, Yidians and elder beings. They all had an element associated with them. And I'm getting sort of, like, I, I, 
this is very early on. I don't know how many more species are going to be there, but like on those same notes of Lovecraftian tones that I believe I've brought up in the series before, I'm sort of getting that same sort of uh, like, like um, I, I get a very Yithian vibe from the Yerks and in the same vein, they are associated with like the, the Greek, el- the G- Greek understanding of the element of water. And then these okay. uh, like, like a, uh, Elemists, I'm getting a very like Nearlatha Tepian feel, and they they remind me of kind of a, or an Azothoth and like a, an air element sort of feel. Um, hey, shout out to all the uh, craft heads out there because I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> Love you, craft heads. Love craft. But we got to appeal to all audiences. So that is a very pro- basic understanding. I feel all like of the Lovecraft heads are going to hate everything I just said, though, because it's the most <laughs> basic bitch understanding. But also, nobody really likes those late... And the craft heads don't really like the later Cthulhu Mythos shit, because it really made... Because it detracts it, yeah. from the true fandom. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, the Elemist seems like... Cassie as a god in the sense that, oh, I'm a hippy-dippy lover of everything green and growing, so I'm gonna save you. Yeah. And the Yerks, to me, represent absolute evil. So he probably yeah. doesn't think of them, like, he probably is somebody who wants to shoot all the wolves so that the deer and the bunnies don't get killed. Which is also wrong. Yeah. Also, also wrong. It- oh, can we talk about how fucking, like, just fucking eat easy Cassie was to turn over just like well you know like tigers and wolves don't want me to give them medicine maybe that's us she's just like like, bark bark Mr. Elemist put a collar on me please this is the thing that I'm noticing in these books as I reread them as an adult the the only two characters that ever have depth in any given book the narrator obviously and their OTP like, yeah. Tobias had depth in this one that I wasn't expecting yeah. at all, but Axe was just, like, flat out, like, one note the whole time. Cassie was, like, shockingly indifferent to any opinion other than her own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I feel like could be almost a bit of meta that um, if these books, which are written as if they were some kind of journal that kids are doing afterwards, maybe this is their memories and what they remember most is the one they love the most. Which is funny because then in Marco's book, who's his OTP? Jake? <laughs> yeah, Tobias. totally. Axe? Axe is the only one who hasn't been hooked up with either. So maybe they get shipped together. I know a lot of yeah. fans. There was that together. weird moment, too, in the forest where, like, Marco made a joke about how Rachel loves Axe or would, like, be a good pairing with Axe. And then yeah, Rachel makes it a point like to say person. in her mind, like, Oh, I'm not into Axe that way. It's like, you don't have to say that. Like, he's a fucking I alien. No, they've been leaning into, like, in They've been books, talking about how he's cute, yeah. Three, four and five, or three and four, I want to say. like Four and five, because Axe yeah. shows up in four. Sh- like, Axe is describing the beautiful poetry that fucking Andalites use to describe trees the way that the trees and rivers grow meet yeah. each other. Of, yeah, and, like, water. Rachel, like, gives Cassie some eyes, like, oh, this- I don't think he's fuckable. I think it's more like, oh, look how cute it is. It's, a, it's Bull like a squirrel. fucking shit. No, <laughs> God, no. <laughs> Rachel does not like Axe in that way, in the she same way that Brayden, you don't like, like, a fucking... It's not like you would actually marry some anime Lolita from one of your shows. Now, hold on. <laughs> I think a fairer example is that Brayden and I would never hook up. And that's how... Like, Rachel does not think of acts that way. But Brayden can appreciate that I look cute, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> oh, see, he's cute. Oh, no. Are we in the OTP the spot. alert now? Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> what? Are we in OTP alert now? OTP alert. There are a few moments where Rachel and Tobias kind of connect. Like, when she, she flies off as him. an owl and then... Goes to talk to Tobias in the woods. Oh, yeah. 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 And then, like, it's she still tries pretty... to hug him once he's human and he, like, flips his shit. Also, wouldn't you be, like, crying if you were, like, all of a sudden transported back into your human body no, after spending, the thing, like... The thing is, Mikhail... Really to... The thing is, Mikhail... Emotions hawks, are complicated. Hawks don't cry. Oh, goddammit. <laughs> 
Okay, here's the last thing I want to talk about for this episode, or at least the last thing I have, uh, which was if Rachel is based in the future, Rachel is basically like, let's say Visser 3 is like bodyguard, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, what are the other guys doing? Like, what do you think that their role in the Yurk army is? Um, um, I feel like I feel. Okay, if we just want to get ribbled with it, I feel like they just hook Jake and Cassie up to procreate more hosts for the Yerks. Uh, um, oh, why would they do that? Alert! So they get that like mixed race baby shit because Yerks are really fetishy over mixed race babies. Huh? Oh, I, no, I'm reaching now. Is that book twenty like- six? <laughs> okay, here, here's my uh, theory. Book twenty six, Brayden, you're back. What's going on? You're the Yerks are really into interracial sex. Tell everyone! Tell everyone! Tell the president! <laughs> he did it! He did it! He got to us in time! It's funny because... Before he was killed! It's funny because, you know, book 26, it's not the Yerks who are into interracial sex. It's us. It's a different alien! It breaks the fourth wall, and they we're the aliens. They talk to Brain and, and they find a podcaster... An unnamed podcaster who's really into interracial porn. Yeah. And he sides with the Yerks so they can just Yerk to people of different races and bone for his amusement. No, I feel like in reality, I feel like um, they're all dead. (laughs) No way. Are you kidding me? I mean, at least Axe is dead. I feel like most of them Oh, Axe is dead. Axe is dead hundo, because yeah. Visser 3 wouldn't let another Andalite. He would not have, let another Andalite no, have a year. but he, here's the role breakdown. So Tobias is the counselor for depressed for depressed Yerks. Tobias is just a hawk. They wouldn't put a Yerk in a tiny little hawk body. They would just kill him, right. too. Apparently, they'd cook and eat him. Oh, yeah, they made illusions. They made allusions to cooking and eating yes. him. Yeah, so so Tobias is dead, and they just cook and eat him. You guys are not taking this seriously at all. Excuse <laughs> you, Mikhail. No, they say they say in we book seven. And eat him. Oh yeah, Tobias. Remember him? He was delicious and greasy with his hawk meat body. Legit I mean, words that, that came out. Just, they were probably just fucking with him. They, I mean, they, that they wasn't the question. Also, but, like, why would they put Kate Mikhail Mikhail in this book? Like, Tobias is a morph in Capable Hawk, because he's stuck in Hawk Morph, and now I'm rapping. No, but, like, why okay. would they put a Yurk into a Hawk body? They would just kill him. They would kill him. Marco so many reasons probably... that I can't talk about right now. D- but, yeah, because okay. he can't okay. morph, okay. Mikhail. Marco. Marco. Marco would be in, Marco. in charge of, like, tactical No, he's um, he is... Well, yeah, he is now Visser 2's lieutenant, because yeah, who would a- be Visser 2? His fucking mom. Yeah, 100%. yeah. Unless his mom is dead, in which case I feel feel like Jake could be Visser too. Wait, Jake wouldn't be a Visser. Why not? Why would he? I mean, I feel not like Jake they would have given the no the year. I feel like they would have. No, I know, but like if Rachel Yerk wasn't a Visser, because Rachel isn't really good at patriarchy. Hating, whereas, dude. like, <laughs> and also the fucking patriarchy. Yerk triarchy. Yerk triarchy. Although Did I think have gender. I know. I think the Yerks are genderless. Oh. Yeah, I think maybe they, are. they like. I think they just adopt the pronouns of whatever host body they're in. If the host body uses gender norms, but yeah, I feel like they're genderless. How, did we ever figure out how Yerks reproduce? Um, not yet. I okay, think we okay. find that out in book sixteen. Okay, don't tell me. I am excited for the surprise. <laughs> book sixteen, Brayden. It's you. How how do Yerks oh reproduce? Interracial sex. <laughs> What? I don't what? get that fucking guy. <laughs> I think guy. he said the internet, which is what book 16 is about. That's cool. Ba-da-da, ba-da-da, ba-da-da. Spoiler anyway. cast. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so Rachel, Visitor 3 bodyguard. Uh, Cassie died fighting. Not gonna, not gonna. Yeah, yeah Cassie I feel like dead. she's dead. Probably belongs to another Visitor. Uh, that's a fucking prop if I've he's ever probably, seen one. Like, yeah, totally. he's probably I a belong. Part. This was the body of the leader of the Animorphs, that resistance movement that we believed were Andalite bandits. You know what, actually, I think Marco's Yurk would have committed suicide because that boy would have just been memeing all over that Yurk until yeah. the Yurk couldn't take it anymore. He'd be like... Me- memes for years. Memes for years. And the Yurk wouldn't understand any of the humor. I mean, he would because he had Marco's head, but he wouldn't really appreciate it the way that Marco did, and he would just commit suicide. 
He's like, here come that boy. Oh shit, it's dead. It's suicide, because Marco killed him with memes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Topical I would, humor. I mean, I, I, won't I super was thinking it. about it, like, in a definitely serious way, but now yeah. I've completely lost interest. Okay, well, <laughs> what was your super serious way, Mikhail? Marco was lieutenant to Visser 2, who was now his mom. Mm-hmm. Jake, I guess Jake could be a visser. Like, I, that's not beyond the realm of possibility. Maybe he's like a sub-visser or something. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, Cassie, I assumed Cassie would be like uh, like a freak show for like vis- uh, like the visser court, where they would like force her to morph into things, and Yurks would go in and out of her and like have a taste of it. Do you know what I mean? What Ooh, the fuck? Mikhail, your brain is so fucked! You well, just because want to she mind rape the poor little girl. In well, the because Air they Wars. understand that what's super important to her is like the dignity of the self and all that stuff. So, what's uh-huh. the best way to humiliate her? Just basically uh, take that away. I don't want to talk to Mikhail anymore. <laughs> I don't. Is this what he thinks about? This is what he thinks about. Just like, mm, yes, this nine to twelve year old character would not enjoy being mind controlled and forced to perform. You guys Not talk about all. teenage dick and V all the time. Teenagers fuck, okay? That's a thing that happens. <laughs> That's a thing that happens, Mikhail. Teenagers but don't, just don't get, like, shove psychologically their face. Yeah. tortured. They put their dicks in each other's butts and have sex. Okay, so Tobias Unless would be... Unless their name is Omar Kader. <laughs> <laughs> so Tobias would be the, like, thought speak counselor for... Uh, Yurks that are like depressed because like now there's no like I don't know no one else to conquer or some huh. shit like that. No, really he'd be dead, Mikhail. Thought. He's a hawk who can't morph. Why would they keep him alive? Why That's would they the try question. and shove a yurk into his little hawk brain? They wouldn't. Oh they would kill him. Although let's get real, he'd probably be dead of old age by then. He would. Hawks don't yeah. live very long. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, now okay. the depressing stuff's behind us. What do you? Predictions for book eight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not um, book eight. Megamorphs one. Oh, yeah. Oh We're going to read the oh. first Megamorphs book. Oh, Megamorphs shit. one um, comes in between. I totally forgot. We're going to get this uh, prediction live, y'all. Yeah. I, I normally I try to write up some notes to um, streamline this, but I. <laughs> this is going to be near the end. Uh. Fucking megamorphs. Jesus. What what <laughs> they're like the fuck is a megamorph? They're thicker books, they're longer, and they go from different like everyone's point of view. Okay. It switches every other chapter. Is it is it canon? Is it in... It's canon. It's in canon. This okay, one happens like, between book happens... seven and book eight. They're just called megamorphs because they're longer books. Mm-hmm. Um and they don't get referenced a whole lot in the regular timeline, and also because they switch um people's point of view. Like if you scroll down yeah. to the chapter thing Oh, Look, cool. Jake, Rachel, Marco, Jake, Marco, Cassie, Rachel. This, is the, ti- this is the first time we oh, hear Axe's point of view, which is also very interesting. Oh, that's going to be great. Um, okay. Fucking, I don't know. What do you do after fucking God tells you he's on your side? Is this a Become beach religious. episode? Are they just gonna... A beach episode? Is this a fucking, like, beach episode? Like, it's just them straight chilling, just like, it's cool. The Lord is with us. We can do whatever we care. <laughs> Hell exists and the Lord is with us. Did you remember that time Our when there was only one set of footprints? Our enemies shall go to the lake of fire, y'all. Remember that time when there was only one set of footprints? That's because the Elemist morphed a guy with only two <laughs> footprints. So, and he carried you all, also. So, Lord, sometimes I see that there was only one set of footprints. Why did you leave me? What? No. That was that time that you got your leg cut off. And then I morphed into a snake so I could, like, <laughs> act as a cane for you, you fucking idiot. You idiot. You, you idiot. idiot. <laughs> Let me tell okay. you a thing or two about footprints in the sand. <laughs> uh, n- uh, next week, uh, we'll be talking about, on Life in the Gardens, we'll be talking about the grizzly. Or, well, the first we'll talk about the African elephant. Then we'll talk about the grizzly bear. Um and then after that, like we just talked about, we'll be talking about Megamorphs number one, and we may or may not have a special guest <gasps> for that episode. <gasps> Until then, my name is Mikhail, the host. I'm Tessa, the expert. And I'm Brayden. I'm 
God, I'm I'm just looking at the Megamorphs covers and I'm just these kids are fucks. Oh God, they're so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Phantomorphs, the Dork Bajir Chronicles. <laughs> If you're looking for more Phantomorphs content, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search for Phantomorphs, the Dork Bajir Chronicles. Brought to you by Collective Legacy, a podcast network.